Yeah, we have Dr. Lucy Jones on the phone with us. Uh, Dr. Jones, are you with us? Yes, I am. All right, let, let, let's talk about, first of all, thank you for your time. Let's talk about what has happened here. Okay, it's a magnitude 4.6 located very near the Malibu Coast Fault, likely source of this earthquake, which is a fault that comes to the surface right at the Malibu Coast and then dips down under the mountains. That's why the mountains are there. They grow up along that fault. At 4.6, there's already been over 15 aftershocks just in the, the next hour, so it's got a, a very robust aftershock sequence. Probably, you know, it wouldn't be at all surprising if at least the people out there who are nearby will end up feeling another earthquake uh, today. How many more can we expect, Dr. Lucy Jones, of these aftershocks that we will potentially feel? Um, actually feeling them, only another one or two, probably. Right? There's a range uh, between different events. This is on the higher side of number of aftershocks. There's about a 5% chance on every earthquake that the aftershock will get bigger than the, foreshock, the first earthquake, and then we'll change the name, call the first one a foreshock, and, mm. and the larger one could be, be called the main shock. So that's about a 5% chance in California, and um, so you, you know, there's 20 chance we're going to feel something bigger in the next day or two. But most likely, there'll just be a couple more magnitude three so far. It's only been one that was as large as three, one 3.0. All of the other aftershocks we've recorded are, are uh, mostly magnitude twos. So the fact that it was a 4.6 here, uh, Dr. Jones, uh, we spoke with L.A. County, L.A. City, and Ventura County Fire Departments. Uh, and, and they're essentially, without there being any reports of injuries or damage at this point, they're just sort of in regular dispatch mode. Um, that's normal protocol for, for a magnitude this size, correct? Correct, and, and it's appropriate for this size. There shouldn't be any damage in California at this level. If you're very nearby, you would have felt it strongly, and probably a certain number of people were scared, but you wouldn't have damage to any California house. By the time you get over here in Pasadena, where I felt it, it was like, oh, yeah, that's an earthquake. Hmm, boy, my day's going to hell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not because you're here with us, obviously. I want to point that out. Correct. I'm going to get a different amount of work done today than I thought I would. Right, right. Uh, but you talk about, uh, you know, there, there shouldn't be any type of structural damage at this point because this is a lot of where we are today versus where we were 30 plus years ago with Northridge. Well, right. I mean, this is, it's, well, even 30 years ago, you shouldn't have seen damage for a four and a half, right? Um, I can remember a magnitude five in 1988 that knocked, you know, bottles off the shelf at the nearest Trader Joe's and felt widely and scared people. But that was really all the damage. I mean, we, we have been building for the bigger earthquakes for a long time in California. And under five, there shouldn't be any damage. Dr. Jones, how much more? I know technology has advanced since the Northridge earthquake, but how much more is there to do? It depends on what you, for what, for what objective? To understand more about the earthquake process, we can do research forever. And that's one of the reasons we have the seismic network. We will get great data from this and people will analyze it and understand better what the faults are and the ways in which the waves propagate and where we expect to see amplified shaking. In terms of uh, how prepared we are, um, we need to remember that California has only asked, and this is well, worldwide, it's only asked that our buildings not kill us. They've not asked that our buildings be usable after a big earthquake. And the one thing I would really like to see changed is that we make a slight, add about 1% to the cost of construction, and we would have buildings that can be repaired after the earthquake instead of torn down. Yeah, Dr. Jones, um, again, excuse the pun, but this is really sort of a way of jolting people back into uh, the fold in terms of earthquake preparedness kits, uh, again, um, safety measures, what we should have beside our beds, stored away in our closets just in case of a disaster. Uh, do you want to maybe hit on that here before we let you go? Okay. Just uh, Number one, the first thing I think you should do is go talk to your friends and family about it, because if there's actually a big earthquake, you're going to be depending on them for help. And the more we talk about it, the more we form a community that's working together, the better off we'll be. Number two, when we get to the biggest earthquakes, we're going to probably lose water distribution systems. Mm. So the most important thing you can do in terms of a kit is make sure you have water stored. And I'd just say, however much water you have, why don't you consider getting some more, because you've probably underestimated it. Um, and then, um, now, and third, remember that almost all damage is preventable. And if you own a building in California and it's not built to the most recent code, you can make it stronger. 
go talk to a foundation specialist or a structural engineer and look at what it is. Every house I've bought, we've had it examined, and about half the time we did some extra work. All right, Dr. Lucy Jones, uh, we appreciate your time as always, and of course, your expertise. Thanks for being with us here this afternoon. Very good, thanks. All right,